Hello and welcome to what is my second video on my channel. I thought this would be much further down the line, but I actually had some friends over this weekend to do jigsaw puzzles and I started talking to them about quality. And I realized that right now they're in the position I was about a year ago where they didn't realize that there was a different quality in jigsaw puzzles. I myself found this out after I joined a jigsaw puzzle swap group and there was a way where you could put preferences for what types of puzzles you wanted. Before that time, I thought the only preference was what type of image you wanted on the puzzle and how many pieces you wanted to work with. I didn't realize there was such differences in quality in puzzles. My goal is to let you know how you can actually tell the difference between a good quality puzzle and maybe a poorer quality puzzle. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love puzzles that some people would consider very poor quality but I just think there is something different to understanding the value in having a good quality puzzle. And if you're like myself, your puzzle experience was mainly those big packs you could get from Walmart. And if you had asked me even up till a year ago, I would have said those were the best puzzles out there because you got so many in one box. Now, before I get too far into it, I do have to thank whoever writes the blog Jigsaw Puzzle Junkies or Jigsaw Junkies. Um, it is a wonderful puzzle. There's a lot of puzzle envy going on when you look at how they have organized all of their puzzles and just the amount of puzzles that they have. Um, but they've obviously been working on puzzles for over 20 years and so they have a very large collection. Also though, they have put together a rubric and in my line of work, I love rubrics. But the rubric is just for evaluating puzzles and evaluating puzzle quality. This rubric is beautifully made and I'm going to put a link to it down in the description. So if you wanna analyze a puzzle yourself, you can go find that PDF. Remember I didn't make the rubric, I'm just using the rubric to help myself gain awareness of better quality puzzles. If you get into the jigsaw puzzle world, even for a little while, you'll learn that the king of all jigsaw puzzles is Ravensburger. These Ravensburger puzzles are going to determine basically what is good quality and what is not. I think there are some areas where Ravensburger has some competition, but for the most part, if you want to know a good quality puzzle, you get a Ravensburger puzzle and that is good quality right there. Now let's go through the points of what would make, for example, a Ravensburger quality better quality than, say, one of these puzzles that I have in a bag. The first point is going to be the box. Even just looking at the outside of a box, you may think, well, don't all puzzles come in a box? It's pretty much made out of cardboard and that's a good quality box. Well, not all boxes are made equal. For example, this Ravensburger box is very sturdy. I can feel it when I hold it in my hands that it's not gonna fall apart. Think about some of those cardboard boxes that you'd have maybe for gift wrap when the sides would already start to curl in if there was nothing to hold it up. This box can stand alone all by itself. Now compare that to another puzzle box that I have. This puzzle box is from, I don't actually know who made this puzzle box. Maybe it's written on here somewhere. Okay, it's a Seiko. And this puzzle box, if you take the lid off, first of all, the lid is just a plastic piece that sits down inside of the cardboard. And over the years, I've had to tape it up because the lid was constantly falling off and the pieces were just spilling out all over the place. So if you wanna be able to have your puzzle and not lose all the pieces, you need a box that's going to allow you to get to the puzzle and not lose those pieces. Um, the puzzle box itself is actually pretty sturdy, but I know a lot of people, myself included, like to use the box as a place to sort their pieces as they're doing the puzzle. And with this box being so long and skinny, it would be hard to do that. So I didn't really see this mentioned on the rubric, but I would take off points for that because of such a um, difficult to use box. Okay, I also have this box, which again, I love this puzzle, but it's called Crowd Pleasers. Oh, it's another Seiko box. So apparently I'm not a huge fan of these boxes, but notice here that the box, in order to open it, this part had originally been glued and the glue is left on this part of the box. And then it also has like a serial top close. And so in order to keep the puzzle shut, you had to shut it like a serial box. Now that has caused me to lose many pieces from this puzzle over the years. And even though it's one of my favorites, 
I've lost probably, I think three pieces. So after you look at the outside of the box and compare that, you're then gonna open the puzzle and look at what's inside the box. Now most people would think, okay, what's inside the box? It's the pieces. But actually, high quality brands include a lot more than just the pieces inside the box. Sometimes the pieces inside the box will actually be inside of a bag itself so that'll keep the pieces all protected. You also can come across, uh, very commonly, a poster. And I have one here of a puzzle I did this weekend. Okay, it includes a poster of the puzzle that you're going to do so that you can use this image and it's a full-size poster where the label or the logo is not covering up any of the image and you can use this image when you're doing the puzzle. Now another thing that some puzzles will include is actually these other two pictures. These are pictures that are kind of like a catalog of other options or other puzzles you could get from this company. Another thing that is sometimes included in the box, and I can't find one now, if I find it I'll put a picture of it, uh, but they'll include a stand where you can put the lid on the box and then the lid could sit up and you could see the puzzle while you're doing the puzzle. You could see the puzzle while you're doing the puzzle. You could see the picture on the box because the box would be standing up. Oh, inside the box as well. One of the things that I haven't come across this yet, but apparently you can get a box that won't have all of the pieces inside of it. Since I pretty much always just did the same puzzles over and over and over again, if there was ever a missing piece, I always just assumed I lost it. But maybe over the years, there's been boxes where the pieces were missing when you actually got the puzzle. It's apparently not very common, but in some brands, it might be pretty common. You also might have some puzzle boxes that give you an extra piece, which that tells you if you have the extra piece, then it's probably missing from somebody else's box too. So you don't wanna not have enough pieces, but you also don't want extra pieces in your box. Another thing that some puzzle companies will include is actually a puzzle glue. So if you want to glue your puzzle, they're going to include the glue already inside the box. The next thing after the box that I think makes a puzzle higher quality is actually if you look at the pieces themselves. In some puzzle pieces, you'll find that the cardboard is actually thick enough that it makes a difference when you're doing the puzzle. I never realized that there was a difference in the thickness of the cardboard. I think because most of my puzzles were coming from the same company because I always bought them at the same place. Another thing that can make a puzzle of a better quality is actually in the piece shapes. There are the standard puzzle shapes that have knobs and out parts that have special names that I don't remember but some puzzles will come with different shapes that make the puzzle more interesting to put together. There's even a puzzle company, if I remember who they are, I'll put a picture up on the screen, but you can actually order a wooden puzzle and they'll make custom shapes. They can even put your name in the wood of the puzzle and that will become one of the pieces. So it's very interesting to me how some companies are able to take the puzzle theme and put that into the shapes. One of the things that comes along with having interesting shapes to the puzzle is also where the border or the puzzle itself could be an interesting shape. Some of the more common shapes, obviously we have the rectangle, um, but more common, I would say, interesting shapes would be a circle. Some people have done maybe a circular shaped puzzle, but there's also puzzles that are shaped like an animal or shaped like a snowman or the puzzle itself is shaped like a house. These interesting shapes create interesting patterns within the puzzle itself and then the puzzle itself could be an interesting shape that will often be a sign of a better quality puzzle. I think the easiest thing to notice right away when you take someone who's never done maybe a, a puzzle that's of Ravensburger quality and they do a Ravensburger puzzle, they can feel right away the click, how they fit together just a little bit more smoothly than other puzzles. When the pieces fit together well, it's really easy to tell that you've put the piece in the right spot. Maybe some of us have done a puzzle and you've put a piece there and you pull it back out and you put it in because you're just not quite sure if the piece goes in the spot that you put it in. Well, if you do a higher quality puzzle, that should happen less and less frequently. Maybe one or two pieces you're still not quite sure of, but for the most part, you should be pretty sure that you've put that piece in the right spot every time if the puzzle is of a higher quality. Another thing that is interesting about puzzles that you can tell higher quality versus not as high quality is actually the image itself. When I was younger and before I started researching puzzles, I thought the images were just chosen out of images that already existed. But some companies actually have artists that they work with 
and those artists are almost on retainer for that one company and they design images specifically for puzzles. The image quality should be almost like a poster where the colors are saturated and the darks are not too dark but the lines are very sharp. So you want the image to be a good quality image so that when you look at it, you think, oh yes, I know what this image is, and you're not distracted by a fuzzy image or a poorly colored image. And you also want the image to match the image that is on the box. So the image quality should be of the same quality that is on the box. Now, aside from assessing an individual puzzle, uh, the rubric I was looking at also has a section for assessing the brand itself. Now a better or higher quality brand would have a lot of different artists with a lot of different puzzles and a lot of different themes. They would come out with new images on a regular basis and usually the company would have a few artists that just work with their company and come up with fresh designs. Well there you go. That is what I've learned so far about jigsaw puzzles and different qualities. Really, at the end of the day, if I like the image, I'm going to do the puzzle as long as I have enough time and it's an interesting amount of pieces. But I am interested to learn more about different puzzle brands and different puzzle companies because there's so many out there. There's a lot of small brands and just specialty like artisan brands. And I'm really just curious to learn more about puzzles. So I hope you join me on this journey as we learn about more puzzles and interesting puzzles along the way. See you next time.